Hey everybody, I'm Kyle Reyes. I'm the national spokesperson for law enforcement today and we came up to Massachusetts to interview this gentleman. Jeff, can you tell everybody who you are? <laughs> sure, Kyle. I'm Jeff Deal running for the United States Senate. I live in the town of Whitman. I have a wife and two daughters. We own a small business and I've been serving in the Massachusetts legislature for eight years. Really great chance to come and talk to you. Thanks for doing this. It's an honor. You know, guys, we had an article that we dropped on law enforcement today where we talked a little bit about Elizabeth Warren and some of the comments that she's made about police in America, specifically about police in Massachusetts. Uh, we were inundated with messages after from people who were understandably upset. And, and we found this guy who is sort of the antithesis um, of her and her statement. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. We're you know two weeks away from the election now. Um, when you first heard some of these statements, how did that resonate with you? Because I know you spent a lot of time with law enforcement. Sure. Well, we've been campaigning for over a year and we've known a lot about what Elizabeth Warren stands for or against in this case. And we've known that for her, law enforcement hasn't necessarily been something that she's in support of and what they're doing. We knew for a long time that she'd been calling for the elimination of ICE, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency that obviously identifies those who are in our country illegally and of course committing crimes and trying to deport them. And so she's called for the abolition of them. More recently though, uh, about a month ago, she was down in Louisiana speaking at Dillard University when she made some really com uh, troubling comments about uh, the criminal justice system as a whole. She said that it's racist from front to back. And I think that really got people who serve in law enforcement incredibly upset. And um, she really hasn't backed off that statement other than to say that she didn't call them racist. And I had a debate with her just a few days ago where I said, you know, please tell me. I had actually uh, people in the criminal justice system, um, uh, corrections officers and police officers right there. I said, which one of them is and which one isn't racist? When you say front to back, you're saying all of them are racist. And if they don't leave their jobs, then they must inherently be racist themselves sure. because they accept the system as it's set up. And um, you know that, I think, is something that she really um, hasn't been able to walk back, and I don't necessarily know if she wants to walk it back. Uh, she actually kind of doubled down on it and said that you know immigrations and customs enforcement agents are unable to you know discern who's a real danger at the border. And I don't think she even is aware that Border Patrol actually protects the border, not ICE. Right. Um, but beyond that, you know, I think that she also has mentioned that ICE is um, unable to, you know, they, they cause uh, people who are here illegally, uh, women of domestic violence for specifically, uh, to not go and report their abusers because they may be deported or their, their um, significant other may be deported. And an ICE officer who uh, reported back in uh, the press, I think just today, uh, said it's the opposite. What's happening is that when a domestic abuser uh, is not reported, it's because they're being let back out on the streets and the victim um, is, is scared that they're actually not going to be deported. So, you know, the system itself, I think, is, is not working um, for people who are coming here illegally. Clearly, they, you know, they want to be part of the country, but they're crossing the border illegally. And then they become victimized by groups like MS-13 gang. Uh, in Boston, 61 members were rounded up and deported uh, just less than a, a year ago. And um, that's the good work that law enforcement's doing to keep our community safe. And again, with Warren, she seems to want to get rid of an agency that's doing incredibly good work for our country. And then this trickles down into you know, law enforcement and the feeling that they don't have the back, uh, backing of either a U.S. senator or, and I can tell you this because I'm a state representative, in the legislature, you know, our state senate just this last year tried to use the budget process to invoke sanctuary state status on Massachusetts. And I'll tell you what, I think local law enforcement likes the fact that federal agencies are working with them to get dangerous criminals out of the state. And so when you have the combination of a U.S. Senator, a state Senate, and then judges that are putting criminals back on the streets based on immigration status, we have Judge Feely from Salem who put a heroin dealer back on the streets because he would have been deported and he didn't want to do that. He, during bench conference, actually said to the prosecutors, look, if he was an American citizen, I would have put him in jail, but because he was an immigrant, I don't want him to be separated from his family. And so he put him back on the street. So there's two sets of laws in Massachusetts and law enforcement officers you know, are stuck basically putting their lives on the line to get these criminals off the street and then they're just returned back out there. But let's think about the impact too that that has on morale as a whole with officers all across the country. I mean, one of the things that a lot of cops can't talk about because we like to think that everybody has First Amendment rights, right? But as an officer, there's only so much that you can say because you have a job to keep. And one of the things that I think so many of them feel 
but can't necessarily verbalize is that there is a war on cops that's going on right now. We see police officers being assassinated in cold blood and now you have judges who are being very, very lenient on people because they don't want to hurt feelings or they want to keep crime stats down. And now you have an officer make an arrest of a really bad person. And before that officer is even back to, to clock out for their shift, that person's back out on the street. So the impact that that has on morale is, is devastating. But when you hear these comments that Elizabeth Warren and, and others have made, don't you think that that sort of puts officers at risk? It's almost encouraging this war against cops. Well, look, you can look no further than this last summer when four officers have been shot. Two of them fortunately survived their wounds from Falmouth. But in Yarmouth, um, Officer Gannon was killed by someone who had a criminal record that should have kept him behind bars. The revolving door in the judiciary is not helping police there. Um, and then uh, Officer Michael Gannon, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael Chesna of Weymouth, um, was killed with his own gun, disarmed by someone he was chasing with a rock, okay? And I think what you're starting to hear from law enforcement is they're afraid to use the force available to them to protect themselves or the citizens they're trying to protect because they would be the one that goes on trial if they were to use uh, the force available and then the, the criminal they're going after would be the victim. And that is something that really, I think, undermines overall law enforcement. But we're also seeing the implementation of um, body cameras, um, which I think is something that's showing that there's doubt that, that law enforcement's doing the right thing on the job. I mean, that sends a, a, a tough message to them. Now, I have talked to officers who are okay with body cameras if they're also used to show that the people that are taunting them or committing crimes, you know, what they're doing as well. So we have to make sure that um, if those body cameras are being used only to show bad behavior by the police, that's wrong. They should be showing the bad behavior by the population that's abusing the police. No doubt. Well, we also now see the weaponizing of, of police in politics. Uh, the best example is if you look no further than up in Portland when you had ICE agents who were calling 911, calling out for help, and the mayor said, no, 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 police can't go respond. You are now weaponizing police officers, and I don't hold that against the cops because Listen, yes, they took an oath. However, they also now have to decide between doing their job and, and violating this order that could leave them without a job and unable to provide for their families. Uh, it's disgusting that we are leaving our officers in that position where they have to choose like that. How do we begin to fight back again? How do we return to true law and order? Well, I think it begins by having legislators that, first of all, don't try to undermine the mission, whether it's sanctuary status, whether it's providing law enforcement the equipment that they need, um, making sure that there's moral support as well, um, that you don't have U.S. senators, state senators, uh, and judges working against them. That's part of it. Um, the other part of it, too, I think is, you know, some of these officers, once they're on the job and they're doing uh, the work they're supposed to do, and let's say they come up on a scene where um, one of their officers has been, been killed or, or wounded pretty significantly, um, or they've witnessed a civilian with injuries. A lot of them have some um, mental trauma that happens afterwards, but a lot like PTSD, I think, for soldiers. Sure. And unfortunately, there's also legislation that's being held up right here in Massachusetts that could help them with counseling um, afterwards. And uh, we need to make sure that there's support on the back end so that these officers, when they're going out there, you know, men and women putting their uniform on every day, putting their lives on the line, when they come home, they can't just unsee some of the things that have happened. I mean, sometimes they come up on a very tragic scene and then have to finish their shift for the next six hours without any chance for counseling. I think we need to make sure that they're given that counseling afterwards to help them adapt to what's happened on the job as well. Jeff, speaking of going home, you've got a couple kids of your own, right? right. What kind of country do you want to leave to them? Look, I uh, believe in individual freedom. I think that uh, government that's limited is best, you know, act as a referee, but don't try to shape our lives. I think we as individuals and families do the best job of raising uh, people. I'm an Eagle Scout, so I was brought up to leave the campground better than you found it. And for me, I want to leave this state, this country better than I found it. That's why I'm running for the U.S. Senate. I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be running for this position. I mean, I was 40 years old when I first ran for the state legislature, and now I'm 50 running for the U.S. Senate. And uh, I've committed to two terms. I'm term limiting myself because I don't think it's supposed to be a career. It's supposed to be a calling. And so for me to run for office and try to make things better for uh, all the people out there who are protecting us, whether it's veterans, whether it's uh, law enforcement, whether it's firefighters or, or EMS uh, responders, we want to make sure that, you know, 
our country, our communities are safe and those people provide that. And beyond that, I just want to make sure that everybody economically has the freedom they have to choose what they want to do in life, um, start a small business or work for a small business and um, just do what's ever fulfilling for them. And I think with Senator Warren, my opponent, she has a different vision for what government's all about. She wants to have uh, government basically decide the governing boards of large corporations. I mean, that's one step towards socialism when you have uh, government deciding how businesses operate. And then on top of that, she's for government fully running our health care. You know, that leads to situations like Canada where people come to the United States because they can't get procedures done in a, a certain amount of time. I mean, health care ultimately has to get rationed. And her vision, by the way, of government run health care, the price tag, is $32.6 trillion. Now, our federal budget is $34 trillion. If people want to get a, an idea of what that means to their taxes, that's almost tripling your individual taxes to get to fully government-run health care. So I think with Senator Warren, she sees a, a vision of government pretty much having control of our lives from front to back. Uh, and uh, I see something where our country, actually our state in Massachusetts, it was founded by people who started industries like the textile mills in Lowell or the shoe factories in Brockton, um, machine shops in Springfield. Um, the fishermen of, of Gloucester and New Bedford, they're the ones that built private hospitals and private schools well before Horace Mann created public schools. Yeah. It was private industry that built this state and built this country. In fact, the pilgrims, uh, if Senator Warren wants to look up in her history books, did not come over on a government boat. That was a private uh, arrangement to come over here. I think she knows more about Native Americans than she does pilgrims, in fairness. <laughs> That's true. But, uh, but anyway, uh, all of that's to say is that I think that uh, if you trust the good people of this country to do what's right, um, that's that's the best formula going forward. I don't know where government has stepped in and really been always successful in running our lives. And I think that's the kind of vision I have down in the Senate is um, entrusting people to do the right thing. And uh, of course you do need law enforcement uh, to be there when people do commit crimes and, and step over the line. And then at that time you need to support them in the mission they're doing. Jeff, I haven't heard a single one of my friends who's in law enforcement or an emergency responder or a veteran or their significant others or their families uh, in the region speak out in favor of Warren, but I've heard a lot of endorsements for you. It seems to be sort of a growing trend for you, huh? Sure, we've got 17 law enforcement agencies that have endorsed me, and I don't want to pick out any one as more special than another, but um, I would say that the Boston Patrolmen's uh, Association, uh, the Boston police out there, when they supported my race, they've never supported a Republican for the U.S. Senate before, and this is the first time ever. They understood that I not only support them, but will be a cheerleader for what the work they're doing. And they know that I'll have their back no matter what when I'm serving in the Senate. I think that's a feeling they don't have with the current senator. But there's been numerous agencies. I've had the backing of two former U.S. attorneys from Massachusetts, uh, several DAs, uh, several sheriff's uh, departments, and uh, corrections officers unions. So I think uh, most people that uh, serve in criminal justice understand that I do believe that they're doing the good work of trying to, by the way, not just put people in jail who are criminals, but also create diversions for people who are, let's just, I want to call them maybe amateur criminals, somebody who maybe they've got an opioid addiction and they're stealing and they're trying to um, just feed the habit, but they're not really a career criminal. There are drug courts in Massachusetts. We're trying to divert them to get recovery so they don't go to jail and become professional addicts or professional criminals. Same thing with veterans. We actually have in Massachusetts veteran courts. When you've served overseas and you've been dealing with a lot of the violence they're experiencing and they come back as civilians here in Massachusetts, we don't want to put them in jail if they're having trouble adapting. We have veterans courts to get them diverted for help they need. So we are trying to make sure that the criminal justice system isn't just throw them in the jail and throw away the key. It's getting them the help they need before they even go into jail. And if they do go to jail, when they come out trying to make sure they return into our society with all the help they can get. Jeff, it almost seems as if you're greater than one 1,024th police officer <laughs> at heart. Um, well, listen, I appreciate you coming out here. I appreciate our friend Sal and Dane over at Battlegrounds Coffee That's hosting right. us and having us out. Brother, uh, thanks so much. Best of luck. God appreciate bless you. It. God bless you America. Too. Guys, thank you so much for hitting the share button on this video if it resonates with you. And leave Jeff your comments and thoughts in the comments below. And if I can also add, if you go to dealforsenate.com, D-I-E-H-L-F-O-R, senate.com, we have some bumper stickers, lawn signs we can get out to you if you're here in Massachusetts. Love to get your support for November 6th. Guys, see you soon.